Hi viewers, good day. Welcome to vSparks. Today we are going to see the concepts and features of Google Cloud SQL. We are going to see a demo on the same as well. If you like this video, please subscribe to vSparks channel and click the bell icon for the latest updates. This is the agenda of this video. We are going to discuss on these topics in this video. What is Cloud SQL? Normally, what will you do to get a database? First, you will provision the base machine. Machines could be physical or virtual. On top of the machines, you will install the operating systems and then on top of it, you will install the database. The database engines could be of anything like MySQL, MariaDB, Postgres, etc. etc. You need to take care of the maintenance costs of the machines, OS patching, and then upgrades, and so on. These things are burden for us instead of concentrating in the database operations. To avoid these problems, here comes Cloud SQL. Cloud SQL is a fully managed relational database service from Google Cloud. Here, Google Cloud takes care of the maintenance, OS patching, and stuff like that. In this model, your duty is to provision the database and then to consume it. This cuts down all the burdens that was discussed earlier. With Cloud SQL, you cannot access operating systems at all. You can access only the database. Now, let us discuss the features of Cloud SQL. As you know already, it is a fully managed PaaS service. PaaS stands for Platform as a Service. Cloud SQL supports MySQL, PostgreSQL, SQL Server database engines. It has a very good integration with other Google Cloud products as well. We can secure our databases connections using SSL, TLS protocols or we can use Cloud SQL proxies. We can also use firewalls to secure Cloud SQL. Import and export of data to and fro from Cloud SQL is also possible. We can take the backups of your databases either manually or with the help of automated backups. We can offload the load that is coming to the master database by adding more read replicas thereby the database read operations will be carried out in read replicas. We can also ensure highly available Cloud SQL instances by enabling HA configurations in the case of a disaster. These are the basic differences between Cloud SQL engines in terms of version, storage, import-export options, and supported programming languages. Now let us see few architectures of Cloud SQL. In this architecture, you can see the primary or the master database is created along with the read replicas. You can create the read replicas in the same zone as that of the master database or in a different zone or in a different region. But the best practice is to keep the read replicas as close as possible to the master for better performance. I mean the replication performance. This architecture deals with Cloud SQL high availability configuration. When HA is enabled, master instance persistent disk is synchronously replicated to the regional persistent disks of Cloud SQL. In the case of a disaster to the master instance, Cloud SQL will build a standby instance with the help of the data that is captured using the regional persistent disks. Standby instances can be created in any zone, that's why we are using a regional persistent disks. Here, this is what will happen when a HA failover happens. 
master instance would have been gone and a standby instance should be created using the regional persistent disks. Read replicas will not change its zone in the case of a failover. Once the primary zone recovers, you need to manually trigger one more failover to bring the master instance back to the normal. In this case, the standby instance will be deleted automatically. This scenario is called as failback. These are the things that we are going to do in this demo. Step 1, we are going to log into the GCP console and we are going to check our organization and the project. Just open a browser and just type console.cloud.google.com. Since I have already logged in, it will take you directly to the console without asking a username and password. So once you log in, just check your project name and your organization. So our organization is visbox.com and the corresponding project which I am going to work with is YouTube. Now it's step 2, we are going to create a Cloud SQL instance with HA enabled. The database engine that we are going to choose is MySQL. Just go to the navigation menu, under storage, just click SQL. Now click create instance. So as I already told you, MySQL is the database engine we are going to choose. So in the instance ID uh, field, just give a name. So for time being, I'm giving it as test-mysql and set a root password for your database. Pick any region. In this case, I'm choosing it as Taiwan. So under connectivity, just check whether you have enabled the public IP addresses and then you need to add the authorized networks IP addresses which can connect to this database. In the network field, just give the IP addresses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install my uh, MySQL DB client in a virtual machine. So I'm going to give the virtual machines uh, IP addresses right over to the authorized networks. So this configuration implies that from my virtual machine I can connect my database. So here I am changing the machine type and storage. Here comes the high availability configuration. Uh, if you want to enable the high availability configuration, you need to choose high availability regional. This HA configuration will be helpful in the case of a disaster. Please review all the configurations and then click create. It will take around 3 to 5 minutes for this database creation. So we will pause the video here and then we will resume it back. We are back. Now you can see the database engine is created. Now it's time to connect the database. That is our step 3. So we are going to install the DB client, especially the MySQL DB in our virtual machine. So just SSH into that machine. become uh, sudo and then type m install mysql so this will install the mysql db client in this virtual machine So it is taking some more time than expected. 
before installation it will ask you the confirmation just give yes that's it my sql client is installed here so now to connect just execute the command my sql space dash h h stands for host name our host name should be the public ip address or the instance connection name so in our case we can go ahead and uh, use the public ip address of the particular instance i mean the database instance So just execute this command mysql space dash h space the public ip address of the database uh, instance and then space dash u space root so root is the default uh, username here Yeah, under users you can see the same you can also create additional database user accounts with this option so for now we are going to go with root user so just type the commands like this and then press enter it will ask you the password just enter the password that's it you got connected to the uh, mysql database so you can see we have four databases we can also confirm the same from our console now it's going to be step number 4 we are going to add read replicas to the cloud sql instance we are going to add the read replica in the same zone as that of the primary instance just give a name uh, to the read replica and then just say create that's it if you want to override the instance types connectivity settings for your read replica you can also uh, do that but by default all the configuration settings will be copied from the master db instance so now the database uh, read replica is created it will take 3 to 5 minutes for its creation we will resume it back after that So now you can see the read replica is created and it is uh, updated with the master uh, db instance. Now step number 5 we are going to initiate the failover and we are going to test the ha. When you trigger ha the primary instance goes down and then the standby instance will be coming up in a different zone. Before triggering the failover manually just make a note of your Uh, location so it is asia east 1a so now i'm going to trigger the failover yeah here is the option so once you trigger asia east 1a machine will be going down and then the new standby instance will be coming up in a different zone so once you trigger failover please wait for some time maybe one or two minutes after one or two minutes just check the location of this db instance probably the master instance would have been gone down now you see the standby instance came up in a different location that is asia east 1b that's it now step number 6 you have to clean all your resources that is running in your uh, console to save the cost this is the summary of this video this is what we have discussed for the past few minutes thank you from bspacks and thank you for watching this video